Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell and today we're going to go over kind of quickly the MBK knives, that's Monterey Bay Knives Men Pin. Uh, this is designed by Ray Laconico and it's kind of a cool little knife. Uh, let's jump right into it. First off, we're all TI, we've got some speed holes if you will, design holes, anyhow, any way that it works out got holes down the front side of it and a lanyard hole and we will check our stuff right now our hardware because I want to get that out of the way it is T8 hardware I have not messed with this yet so this is the first time it looks like it's reasonable stuff not real tight but it's deep and deep you know can make up for not terribly tight now that pivot's a little loose. There we go. So, hardware, pretty decent. Uh, in fact, good. Action, great. Let's look on around it. We have a fairly standard clip here. And for this knife, I think that's appropriate. Uh, pretty simple. It will fit in just about anything. Got a really nice ramp. All good. I think if I were doing it, I might have smoothed some of the back of it here, but this is Ray's design, and that's up to him. Everything else has got a very, very small chamfer around it, and makes it look really nice. The scale itself has a slight bit of curvature, and probably very hard to see in the camera. But uh, it does make for a comfortable in-hand knife. Uh, kind of small, but we'll get to that. So what do we get out of this guy? Well, we have an overall total length of 6.5 inches with a blade length of 3 inches. Ray, I am going to pick on you there. If we're going to do through a 3-inch blade, can we do 2.9? And that's just for those people that are buying the three inch blades for legal reasons and uh, they need that little bit of assurance at 2.9, 2.95 uh, centering. Perfect up and our blade thickness, it's 160,000 stock so it is kind of, it's a little thicker than normal actually. It's S35VN, uh, it's all bead blasted titanium with a little bit of machine finish flat right here. Looks good, let's do a little, uh, well let's talk about the weight, 2.8 ounces, pretty freaking light for a small knife. Let's get this out of the way, we don't need it anymore. Let's do a little uh, size comparison. There's our Buck 110, it's of course a lot smaller than the Buck 110 and our Rat Model 1. But uh, let's get some stuff up here that's uh, closer in design, or closer in size anyhow. Here is our uh, customized gent. Eh, very close in size to the gent. Gent comes in just right around 100 bucks, a little less I think. And uh, the men pin is coming in at 225 bit different design philosophy and stuff between the two knives but very similar actually let's see well, there's got to be some other stuff up here closer yeah here we go this is a draken from Wii knives and we got a couple other Wii's up here we'll throw in that are about the same size and we have the Deacon and all of them very nice uh, however, these are going to be fifty to eighty dollars more expensive than the men pin, and this knife uh, you got to be careful on your hand size. And if it if your hand fits, it's beautiful. But if it doesn't, got big hands. Uh, well, you know, not going to be all that great. And we'll throw a Spyderco up here. This is, you guys fill it in for me. I can't ever remember all the different uh, models of the Spyderco. 
they're all the same knife but completely different which is a beautiful thing but uh, this is my latest acquisition from Spyderco and LC200N uh, very similar size and uh, 50 80 dollars cheaper so there you go with the size comparisons and now let's look at what we got here uh, I don't have verification that we have ceramic ball bearings, but I wouldn't see why Ray wouldn't do that. And a ceramic detent, it sure feels nice. So, you know, see, there you go. So, all good there. One interesting design point that uh, I'm not sure if I completely agree with, but I'm also not against. Uh, the lockup on this is titanium on steel. We have plenty of lockup. Uh, it's not going, the blade's not going anywhere. This thing locks up good and tight. But uh, titanium on steel is going to turn some people off. I obviously don't have a problem with titanium on steel, but there are lots of people out there that have their reasons for not liking it uh, whenever you get down into digging around and figuring things out, the realities of things. Uh, it, well, I'm not going to get into it today. We'll talk about that some other time. Let's just say I've done enough research on it that having a titanium interface on a knife is not something that bothers me. Uh, as long as the knife comes and works good out of the box or breaks in quickly. And this one seems to. It's got that right amount of titanium on steel stick, which I like if I'm going to have that. I'll put it up by the mic and you can hear that. And I'll shut up. See, just a little bit of stick. And that actually makes me feel good. I like that. Uh, others are going to be upset about it. But, you know, whatever to each their own. We do have Ray Laconico right there because Ray Laconico designed it. We have a small piece of carbon fiber. Looks very nice in there for a backspacer. And uh, my pants are still UA, so uh, that means unauthorized. Dang, it's been so long, I'm not sure if I remember. Unauthorized leave. It's what it was in the military, but. UA unauthorized you guys fill me in because I'm getting old man I got blank spots in my brain and that one shouldn't be but it is anyhow here we have it and what it's gonna look like in a pocket so it gets down plenty deep enough in the pocket the pocket clip is pretty snug you can hear it click there but it's nice and smooth underneath it so all good and uh, our handle length is about four inches about three and uh well we'll actually if i can get the calipers here real quick we'll measure that proper you guys are awesome for waiting for me to get the calipers off the other desk and let's let's get a measure proper to the first bump and that's pretty small however that first bump is placed pretty well so we'll get a measure out pretty close to the ends so we're looking a little over 3.3 inches probably a little more than that if i get up there yeah 3.3 3.35 something like that and makes for a handle that works good in my hand my pinky hangs off the end just like it does on many of these small knives, but not off the end of the knife, off the end of this point here, which actually works really good in my hand. Uh, does make me want to do this, though, and that's not a good idea because you're right up against that edge. And let's look at that edge real quick just because people are going to want to know. And there's a little bitty sharpening notch and a really nice edge termination now. Before you go, well, they, no, um, they did almost a Spyderco Ricasso area. In fact, as close as many of those factories can get to a Spyderco Ricasso area with the mill. And put a itty bitty sharpening notch in it. And it is almost perfect. Beautiful. Well done. 
Monterey Bay and Ray Laconico. Uh, Clip Point Blade. Ooh. And it's a pretty one. Uh, the the little thing they've done here, and we'll check it on the back of our, on the front of our, man, this thing is getting old and worn out. We don't have any recurve that I can see. So that blade is absolutely beautiful. I just love how it looks bigger than it should against the handle. Always love that as far as height goes. And oof, there we go. So there's not a lot of bad here. There's a whole lot of good for a small gentleman's carry, but still reasonably medium duty use folder. Now, we got to close these out with what would Zell do different? Of course. Well, there's two things Zell would do different on this particular knife. One, I don't like the freaking pointy thing sticking out there. I would shape that tab. This thing flips so well, I would probably make that tab smaller and give it a flat. And since we don't have any interference down here, probably leave the hook there. Or yeah, I'd change the shape of this a little bit. And I would definitely change this shape right here. Reason I would change this shape right here, and I'd have to get in CAD and think about it a bit to tell you what I would do with it. But the reason I would change this shape is because it makes me, because all of our Todd knife and tool knives and most of the knives I carry anymore have some sort of forward choil, it makes me want to grab it right here. So I would change that. You may not need to because it may not be a big deal for you. And if it's a knife you carry every day, you'll learn not to do that because if you do, you'll cut yourself. And one time is usually enough. Some of us, like me, I'm hard-headed, takes two or three, but you know what I mean. So overall, the men pin, you know, we can cut some stuff with it if you want to, but uh, this is a pass-around knife, so we're not going to be grading it on sharpness because uh, I believe Monterey Bay Knives asked that we not do anything with the knives because this is kind of a feedback loop for them, uh, getting some more insight, and, you know, of course, getting a little pub, sending it out to the pass-around group, and I like how it cuts. We'll get that awful behind-the-edge thickness for you guys. Uh, somebody commented the other day that this was not the right tool to be measuring behind-the-edge thickness. Uh, well, we're about... 25 thousandths, which not too bad. Well, you see, you guys can read this tool. If I bring my micrometer set down here to uh, measure behind the edge thickness or any other of the measuring tools I have, they don't have this nice digital readout. They got a bunch of little bitty numbers and little lines that you've got to line up and know how to read. And I'm not going to expect you guys to try to learn how to read a micrometer. That That's just crazy talk. Anyhow, so that's why we use that and why everybody else on YouTube probably uses one of those unless they have a really expensive micrometer set that has a digital readout. And mine was expensive enough. I didn't need to pay for the digital readout. Holy goodness. So there you go. Let's get a good look at it closed. We'll get a good look at it open. I'll even wipe it off, get my fingerprints off of it. And it is a little beauty is what it is. I love what Ray's done here. Uh, it's a flat grind, and that's cool and all. Being a clip point the way they did it, I almost wish that it was a a hollow grind and a little thinner being a small knife but hey it's not that bad and you know we've talked about that stuff before but overall I like the direction they're going I've always liked Ray's designs and one of the big problem with Ray's designs is they end up in very very expensive knives and yeah I know I've got expensive knives up here but I, I don't know, whenever you're getting up into those really expensive ones, I get really selective and really specific about what I want them for. 
And unfortunately, Ray generally makes lighter weight knives than what I like to carry whenever I spend money. Spend lots of money. But man, at 225, if you like Ray's designs, it is a really cool little knife. My little my little fusses there are things that you might want to take into consideration, and you may think I'm an idiot about them. Uh, if you want to take them into consideration, let me know all about it in the comments. If you think I'm an idiot, you can put your stuff down there, too. I know how to delete it. <laughs> but there you go. Pretty cool little knife. Uh, get another shot of that blade, because that blade is really nice, and I told you I would, and then I started talking about other crap. But uh, there you go. The Min Pin from Monterey Bay Knives. And Monterey Bay Knives is uh, Ray Laconico and... Oh, it was there. Where'd it go? And uh, Sanford Owen. Uh, where they wanted to do some higher-end production knives based on their designs. And also, they say high-end production knives based on our designs. They're trying to get them above your... Uh, inexpensive production knives and below the custom prices and for doing that they've done a great job and they have made a rather beautiful little knife in the men pen you guys have a great day don't forget to like share and subscribe and click that little bell button so you don't miss us over here or whenever we do our late knife with zell and staza we really enjoy that show getting to talk to the community and Guys, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.